you know there was a time at the start of last year when I was like I'm determined to read more books than I buy this year and then that just didn't happen but also like this month if I was going to start off with that mindset this year I slumped in January but that did not stop me getting books. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Chloe. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here today. Today's video is my January book haul. So I do have a little bit of a stack of books here. Um, I will say, like, there is reasons I don't need to justify why I bought the books, but I will, obviously. Some of them, well, one of them in particular is a special edition set that I ordered many months ago. I had no clue when it was going to arrive. So, you know, some of them are like that. They're just ones that have been ordered for a while. There were some new releases of, like, sequels to things that I was particularly excited for. And then the other ones are just because I went in Waterstones and there was a sale still on. Like, I already bought some stuff on, like, Boxing Day. But then I went to London at the beginning of January and there was still a sale on. So I was like, well, why not buy more books? And that's where we're going to start. Let's <laughs> start with the first books that I bought in or acquired. Actually, I did a tab. I think I bought all of these. I don't think any of them are ones that were like gifted to me or anything like that. So let's start with the first book that I bought in the month of January. And this one actually is a physical copy of a book that I've already read an arc of and I just needed a physical copy because I have this author's other books. So I wanted it to add to my collection. It is Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a book about two girls who previously dated the same guy. Didn't end well because one of them actually believes that the other one was sort of with the guy when she was with the guy, that there was a whole cheating situation didn't go well but basically this guy is like semi-famous because of his relation to some European royal family and they decide to do a tv show based around him kind of like a bachelor type tv show but all the contestants are previous girlfriends of the guy so basically he's trying to like get a second chance at love with one of his previous girlfriends but the, but then what actually happens when they get there is that these two girls end up starting a relationship together instead so I really really enjoyed this book I gave it four stars it's not my favorite Sophie Gonzalez book I've ever read that is probably still perfect on paper but I did enjoy it it was a fun time I'm not here to give you a review of it I've already done that in a previous wrap-up but suffice to say I enjoyed it enough to get my hands on a physical copy and this one I'll be going with my other Sophie Gonzalez books which live somewhere up here that one I bought at Waterstones Piccadilly when I went to London at the beginning of the month it was on the buy one get one half price table so obviously I had to buy another book to make up the offer and there was a book coming out that I was particularly interested in and lo and behold it was on the offer it is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert this is Talia Hibbert's YA debut Um, I have read her adult romances before I read the Brown Sisters trilogy and I I really really love those books and I'm excited to read this one. It's basically about two teenagers who used to be friends when they were younger and then they kind of drifted apart. I think one of them kind of became one of the cool kids and now all they are really is academic rivals and then I think they go on yeah they go on a two-part survival course in the woods and they end up kind of getting thrown together and the relationship starts to mend and possibly progress into something more. I will be reading this this month. It is on my TBR. I think I'll take it with me when I go on holiday. I, this is my last day at home I travel to London tomorrow and then fly on Monday so I may take this one with me because it's quite short and easy to carry so yeah should be reading this one soon I'm very very excited to read it I love Tally Hibbert's writing so let's see what this one's like I bought one other book whilst I was in Waterstones uh, this one was half price it was on the half price like after Christmas sale and this one is it's an author that I've been wanting to read from for a while and um, this is not necessarily a book that I would like think of as being my first book to read from them but I liked the idea of this story because it is a because it is a queer retelling of one of my favourite classics and the book is called Self Made Boys. It is by Anna Marie McLemore and it is a Great Gatsby remix apparently. I just opened this book to tell you the synopsis and found leaves in there which are from when I went to see As You Like It the weekend that I bought this book um, and I put them in here so that they wouldn't get damaged on my way home so now I'll keep those for my little theatre scrapbook that I've got but yeah this is basically but yeah in this version of Gatsby I believe yes Nick is called Nick, Nick Carraway is now called Nicholas Caraveo and he is a 17 year old transgender boy from Wisconsin and, ba and basically it seems like it is a general story of Great Gatsby because you've got you've got Daisy and you've got Tom but it seems like there is also an un but it seems like there is also another sort of element added to it because it mentions that Daisy has erased any sign of her Latina heritage and passes seemingly as white all, un all unbeknownst to her wealthy fi almost fiance Tom and then there is Jay Gatsby and it mentions on here that Jay is also trans so you have sort of these added layers 
to Gatsby and I'm just very very excited to read it because I've heard good things about this author and I really love The Great Gatsby so why not also I just really like this cover it's pretty so and it was half and it was half price so there we go I will stop justifying my choices now and just show you the next book the next book that I got is one that I actually ordered at the end of December um in the half price of what's done sale and it just took a little bit longer to come than some of the others uh this is a Meg recommendation and I, I will be reading it this month actually it's on my TBR because Meg has put it on my TBR it is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by by Sangu Mandana I do not know too much about this one I know it is about a tutor who who goes to go and teach some young witches it says on the back it says which wanted living tutor wanted for free young witches must have nerves of steel previous teaching experience not necessary witching is essential I don't know too much else other than that I believe it's got some romance in here but I don't want to know too much about it I don't like want to know too much about the synopsis I'm just excited to read it hopefully I will enjoy it I know it's one that Meg really really enjoyed last year and I've had my eyes on it for a while so when it was half price I thought I might as well pick it up next up we have a bit of a random one that I basically got because I missed one by this author at one point and was missing like a hardback in my collection because all my others are hardbacks and this is The Danger Gang by Tom Fletcher so this is one of his his children's books I don't know the synopsis it'll be some sort of adventure about a group of kids in a town I'm sure that is what all of his books are I have read all of his children's books apart from this one and the most recent one Space Band so I've read all the Christmas Horus ones I've read the Creakers I really enjoyed them all they're just quite they're just kind of fun reads to have and yeah I didn't have the hardback of this one for some reason I just missed out on this one so I ended up buying it very cheaply secondhand uh, from Amazon and it's not like a perfect copy it's a little bit bashed in at the bottom here but it'll do just to add to my collection then we have a couple of sequels that I had pre-ordered since various times last year the first one being Hellbent by Lee Bardugo this is the second book in the Alex Stern trilogy I have already read this one I really really enjoyed it and can we just appreciate this particular copy I know people hate this cover I really like it I know it's creepy that's why I like it I think it needs to be creepy for the story that it is also you do hear about a rabbit in this book at one point and there is a reason why there is a rabbit on this cover and it's not a particularly nice thing about this rabbit in all fairness so again I understand why we have a creepy looking rabbit on the cover um but when I say can we appreciate this version separate to that We've got some pretty sprayed edges. This is a Waterstones exclusive. I'm a little bit annoyed that the Waterstones exclusive for Ninth House basically just had an extra like annotated chapter at the end and it was signed. Whereas this one has all the customizations but doesn't have the other extras. So we've got the pretty edges. We've also got some stunning end papers with a snake and a rabbit. Um, it's the same. Oh, it's well, it's almost the same on the back. It's just the bottom half of the rabbit and the snake. We've also got some foil in on the naked hardcover. That's the spine as well. So you could have them as naked hardcovers because the spine on Ninth House does match. Um, so in some ways it matches. But yeah, I just wish I had the sprayed edges on the previous one. It's not a signed copy, I believe. No, they didn't do signed copies for this particular one. But yeah, excited to have this. I will be getting another edition of this because I didn't end up ordering the Illumicrate ones. So that will be coming at some point. But for now... I have my Waterstones edition. The next book that I got is also a pre-order, but I did not get the Waterstones edition for this because I had the standard copies of the other series that this links to and I wanted them to match on my shelves. So this is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This is a sequel series to The Cruel Prince, The Folk of the Air trilogy. I am not going to tell you the synopsis of this because if even I, it, because even if I tell you who this is about, it, it's like a huge spoiler for the first series. So I'm just going to say it is a sequel and yeah anyone that was sort of left standing at the end of that series which makes it sound like loads of people died is a YA series so you can imagine that not that many did but anyone that was sort of left standing at the end of it will still be in this one I believe I haven't actually read it yet I was going to read it in January but I slumped so I did not get around to it but yeah this is the standard UK edition very much matches very much matches the Cruel Prince series not got any sort of special things on this I don't think there's anything special underneath it either you know sometimes these days even the standard ones are prettier but sadly I wasn't on sort of the hype of getting the special pretty editions when the original trilogy came out this was actually one of the ones that I sort of read to get back into fantasy books and 
I just have the standard editions. I just make it a little bit easier though in all fairness when I'm trying to like keep up with them because all I had to do was just get the regular one from Waterstones and I'm set. For the next book I'm going to show you though this is one where I bought the sequel and I've not read the first one yet but I did not want to miss out on getting this pretty edition because I think I'm going to really, really like the first one. Um, this book is A Restless Truth by Freya Mask. The first one is A Marvelous Light. This is the Illumicrate edition so I'm gonna have to be really careful because it's gonna shine because it's got a very shiny cover. Um, this is the front these are the sprayed edges and then that sort of carries on around the back. I will say I don't love the sprayed edges like the way that they sort of blend in with the book as much as the first one. The first one it really felt like it was just like one continuous thing. This feels like a design that matches but not necessarily like a design that wraps around um, if that makes any sense at all. But what I do really like though is this. So it is actually a see-through plastic dust jacket. So without that on there, that is the book. And I just think it's a really unique version of the book and I really like it. I know it's not for everyone, but it is one that I really like. So when the first one came out, I was determined to read it before the sequel because I knew I'd want a matching edition, but I just haven't got around to it. Um, it is signed. Also from the people I know that have read this book, I do think it's going to be a book that I will like. So I will try and make more of a concerted effort to actually read A Marvelous Light at some point in the near future, but we will see. Okay, we are getting towards the end now. I've mostly got subscription box books to talk about um, and then one that was like a very, very delayed order. But the first one I've got to talk about is the Fairy Loot Adult January box, I think it is. Yeah, because I only get the adult one now. I've unsubscribed from the YA and it's definitely the January box. Um, I'm just trying to figure out because like, I haven't got the Illumicrate January box yet because that's not being sent till next week. So I'm just a little bit confused, but this is definitely the January adult fairy loot book. So this is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Trashke. This is a beautiful version. We've got this just pretty cover anyway. I think it's just a colour change from the regular version. But then look, look at the sprayed edges with the like woman with the flower on her head it's pretty um we've also got but well, actually i don't know how i feel about these end papers the pictures just feel like a little bit too realistic for me it's not my favorite sort of art style i like the stained glass element of it but the actual like person is not necessarily my favorite and um, we do then have the some pretty foiling on the naked hardcover and it did come with a signed booklet. Um, this is one that I don't know too much about. I will just try and see a little bit. It says, once upon a time, a man who believed in fairy tales married a beautiful, mysterious woman named Indigo Maxwell Castana Castanada. He was a scholar of myths. She was heiress to a fortune. They exchanged gifts and stories and believed they would live happily ever after. And in exchange for her love, Indigo extracted a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. But when Indigo learns that her estranged aunt is dying and the couple is forced to return to her childhood home, the house of dreams, the bridegroom soon finds himself unable to resist, but within the crumbling manor's extra extravagant rooms and musty halls, there lurks the shadows of another girl, Azur, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who disappeared without a trace. As the house slowly reveals his wife's secrets, the bridegroom will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy, even if doing so threatens to destroy their marriage or their lives. Sounds intriguing. I did not know too much about this before I got it, but I'm willing to give it a go. I do tend to have like pretty decent look with the fairy loot adult ones which is why i've kept this subscription so we'll see what it's like now we have a set that i ordered a while ago that i'm not sure if i should have ordered i think i just got caught up in the moment i was very much planning on reading the first book in the series before these arrived and again not got around to doing it but it is the inheritance games the hawthorn legacy and the final gambit by jennifer lynn barnes so these are the fairy loot mortal editions of these and i do really like how they look on my shelves like I just think it's a nice copy to have there I just really really hope I like them um so we've got quotes on the back of them all the first one says riddles upon riddles secrets upon secrets when it takes all the second one actually no I think I've read those back to front the first one says she came from nothing they had everything let the games begin the second one says a deadly game a puzzle to solve a fortune at stake and the third one said riddles upon riddles secrets upon secrets when it takes all so I don't know too much about these. I will just show you the edges as well. They are pretty. Like I said, I like the additions of them. I just now really, really hope I actually like the books. And then just to give you a glimpse of the sort of things that are underneath them. They're like chess pieces and all things to do with games. Because obviously this is a book series that is all to do with games. I'm showing you these ones in a very random order, by the way. 
And then they do all have artwork on the end papers as well. Uh, various characters that mean absolutely nothing to me at this particular moment in time. So there we go. Again, showing you these in a very out of sort order. But and there is more on the back as well. I feel like, why do I feel like I have to show you absolutely everything? I'm like, I could just stop. I could stop looking at all the individual bits. But it is all very, very pretty. What I'm going to try and do is try and read the first one. And if I don't like it enough to keep it, I will end up passing this set on to someone else. But for now, they will look pretty on my shelves. I should just check one more thing. They are also signed. So, do I regret buying them? Slightly. Have I got them now? Is it too late to change that? Yes. Okay, last two books to talk about. The first one is actually one that I've had an arc of since early last year. It was one of my most anticipated books of last year. I just never got around to reading it because I forget when they're on my Kindle. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, I'll buy the hardback because it was half price in Waterstones after Christmas. I will buy that and maybe that will encourage me to actually read it. And then they took the money for it like the day after Boxing Day and then didn't send it to me till like two days before the last day of the month. It, it was a little bit late. The book is Yerba Buena by Nina Oko. I believe this is her first adult book. I've read a lot of her YA stuff and really really enjoyed that. I really like her writing style and like I said I had the arc of this I just didn't get around to reading it. I don't know too much about it. I assume it's sapphic because most of her other stories are um, it says when Sarah Foster runs away from home at 16 she leaves behind not only the losses that have shattered her world but the girl she was once was capable of trust and intimacy. Years later in Los Angeles she is a sought after bartender renowned as much for her brilliant cocktails as the mystery that clings to her. Across the city Emily de Boer is in a holding pattern in her seventh and fifth major as un in her seventh year and fifth major as an undergraduate. She, she yearns for the beauty and community her Creole grandparents cultivated but is unable to commit. On a whim, she takes a job arranging flowers at a glamorous restaurant, Yerba Buena, and embarks on an affair with the married owner. When Sarah catches sight of, of Emily one morning at Yerba Buena, their connection is immediate, but the damage both women carry and the choices they have made will pull them apart again and again. I am intrigued. Like I said, I've really liked her writing in all the other books I've read, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this one is like. And then the last book that I have to talk about is the Afterlight book for January, and this one is X's and O's by Amy Leah. Again, I don't know too much about this one. I'm just, I've liked all the Afterlight ones that I've read so far, so I wasn't going to skip a month. Also, another one that I've had an arc of. I've had an arc of this, and I had an arc of Set on You, which is the author's other book. have not read them. They are on my list to potentially read when I'm traveling because I have them both on my Kindle. Um, I'm not going to read the synopsis of this one because I don't want to know too much about it. Um, I'm just seeing if there's like any tropes I can pick out on here. Oh, it seems like it's a second, it's a second chance romance by the sounds of it, which I probably could have guessed from the title. Uh, we've got some pretty artwork on the end papers. And then on this side as well colour of the book underneath because the afterlight ones are just always really cute and pretty underneath them like not with designs or anything they just have some really nice colours and then we've got a signed copy so yeah I'm excited to read this one I do kind of wish that they'd have done like a matching edition of set on you I know that they're not related but I, I liked when they did that with like the love hypothesis for example like, it was nice to have like a matching set of those books because now if I want to get set on you I'm gonna have to have the paperback but anyway we move on from that so this is some of the books that I hold this month I don't think I can actually hold up all of them but yeah definitely hold a lot more than I read this month maybe we should fix that in the future maybe I do actually need to read some but then again I am going on a trip in February where I could definitely buy a lot of books so we will see that is everything thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe all that good stuff down below and I'll see you guys soon with a new video bye